I said, there's obviously a few people in this room that won't like what I'm about to say. Okay? I'm not saying it to offend you, I'm just stating what the truth is. And I went through everything. We don't come much time, mate. This guy came over, sat down, Inspector Neil Stevens, or still Neil Stephen Mills or something like that. And he says, he said, you don't have a license? I said, no. I said, well, with the greatest respect, I said, I don't do this to piss you guys off. Mm. I do this because it's my right. Okay? Mm. Um, I said, I understand where you're coming from. I said, there's people out there who want to play your game. I don't. I'm outside of that, and, it's, and I don't I don't do things to incite people or provoke people. I just do what I want to do. That's my sovereign right. And we had a really good chat, and, and I said, and he asked me a few questions. I said, well, I've got one question for you. He said, what's that? So when I leave here, I said, I'm going to have a pack of high trial cars up my ass, am I? He said, mate, absolutely not. So I'm going to waste our time. Yeah. Because you know? I'll go to court, mate. I have no problems. I will go to court, and I will argue my case, and I'll say to the judge, show me your writ of commission, because until you do, you don't have jurisdiction, sir. And they might get pissed off. And they might lock me up as a, you know, for the sake of, of not identifying myself in court. of commission, which is showing that they have. Well, before they can act as a as a, a uh, uh, authority in one of the Queen's courts, they have to be commissioned by the Queen to act with that authority. Right? And they don't have the writs of commission. The writs of commission have never ever been issued. Writ. Never been issued. Writ. 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 A writ. Writ of commission. So does that just finish it straight away? Oh, no, they like to it'll they like it'll to hear prolong what, it. Yeah, they like to hear what you've got to say. You know? She doesn't have the authority to issue them either, does she? No. But so I've got a document. I've got, I've, got a, I've got a document. No, I've got a document called, called that, I, that I did. It's it's 31 pages. Like you've seen you've seen you've seen that defence, eh? And it, all it is is just a, a written defence to any charge that they want to lay against you. Right? And if you just fill in the blank sort of thing, like take my name out and put your name in, yeah. and you file that with the court, oh, mate, they're going to know exactly who you've been talking about. Yeah. I'll never forget the day we went in, we went in to file at the court, file the defence, and uh, we, we, we filed it with the court, we went to serve it on the police, and the, this young police officer in the casino, he said, he said, you can to help you? I said, yeah, I'd just like to serve this document on you. He said, oh, well, I'm not going to take it. I said, mate, you have to. I said, this is a police station, is it? He said, yeah. I said, you're over the age of 18. I said, you look at it, you don't fucking act it. I said, can you take the document? Give me a receipt for it. He said, no. I said, fuck you, I'm not going. I'll stay here till, till you do. He said, get out of the police station. I said, oh. I said, mate, are you the senior officer here? He said, no. I said, well, get fucked. He said, what? He said, get out of the fucking station. I said, no. I said, you're not charged with the care and control of this facility, are you? So you can't tell me to get out of this station. This is a public, I, I own this place. I said, until the senior officer here tells me that under his care and control, I'm required to leave the building on the charge of trespass and go fucking nowhere until you give me a receipt for the document. You're being fucking served. All right? Anyway, he said, if you don't get out of the police station, I'll arrest you. And my wife, like I said, she's got a mental problem. She turns and she says, you arrest him and you'll have to fucking arrest me too. Oh, well, if I've got it, in this station, this, this big fella comes out, this detective. He said, what's going on? He says, it's not got nothing to do with you, pal. I said, you're plain clothes. It's to do with... Office, uh, uh, uniform police matter. I said, I want this document. It's been served. I want a receipt. Then this other copper comes in. <coughs> he said, What's going on? I said, Ah, I said, you got the pips. You the sole officer in charge? He said, Yes. I said, I'm trying to serve this document on a young fellow here and he doesn't have the brains to understand that he's been served. It's in his possession. I want a receipt for it. He said, Give him a fucking receipt for the document. <laughs> so, thanks, mate. Then we left yeah. the police station. How long is that document? 31 pages. 31. Yeah. But is that on the CD? Yeah, I'll put that on the CD. Can you send a copy of it? So this young bloke's got to read that. You, you, oh, no, he didn't have to read it. He went to the police prosecutor. I remember when I walked into the court and I said to the police prosecutor, I said, have you read the defence yet? He said, oh, yeah, I've read it. I said, I said, how bad do you feel? He said, well, I don't feel bad at all. I said, mate, well, you in for a fucking shock when we get to the end of this. You know? And when I started, I started going into historical facts of the law. Because my first, I said, I'm, I'm not going to answer your allegations until we establish jurisdiction here. Right? I'm, not, I'm not interested in what you're claiming against me. Let's first establish whether you've got the right to make the claim. And if you don't, well, then we've got some problems here. And I've since hit the state government with a schedule of fees. If they, if they stop me, it's 100 bucks an hour, I'll park there off, for example. right? Or if they, if they question me, it's X amount of dollars per question. If they arrest me, it's X amount of dollars. Like, and believe me, it's big money. If they mace me, or physically abuse me, or interfere with my liberty, well, I can talk about millions, brother. 
And since I served those documents on the Attorney General's office, giving him notice that this is what it's going to cost you, these are my, as a sovereign, these are my fees and charges if you want me to do that. Okay? Simple as that. And I'll tell you something else. When you go to court and the court says, I order you to pay $200 fine, that court is operating in the commercial, yeah? In the commercial realm. When you walk into McDonald's and you order a fucking Big Mac, what's the next thing that happens? You pay. So when the judge gives you an order, give him a bill. <laughs> it's common. Okay? It's not common law. Right? It's not common law. It's common. It's commercial law. So when he gives you an order, give him a bill. There you go, you're right. How much is that? $200? He has a bill for $400. Pay it. That bill served on you, by the way, in your full personal commercial liability. You better pay it. That or I will sue you. Yes, so what happens? Or I will sue you for the money. You gave the order. There's the bill for the order. So what happens in a situation where I haven't paid my Telstra bill for over a year, they've now given it subletted as a debt to uh, some third person. party? Oh, no, 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 no. Did you sign the contract with the third party? No. Nah. Well, I'll tell you what I did. They said they could threaten with legal action. Yeah, yeah, good. To get the children back. Yeah, good on. Um, I had the debt, I had $75,000, I had an unsecured overdraft, I had about $75,000, and I paid it all off for 10 grand, because I, I, my responsibility was that I had the money. Well, Westpac, because I, I used, I, Sam, I tell you, I, I, I'm good friends with the family who used to own Westpac, right, in the Carthage Islands. And old Dick pulled a few strings for me, and they, they let me pay the bill off. We paid it all but about 10 grand. And then they sold the debt um, to, um, Oh, some management. Uh, debt recovery office. Yeah, yeah. And then they sold it to someone else's. And these people rang up and said, Oh, look, we've just bought your debt. I said, Have you? So you're fucking stupid, aren't you? Because like, like, by this time, like, this, the, the mob before them just were just pains in the arse, you know? We kept making the payments and they kept on being assholes with us. And I said to them one day, so, There's no need for this. You know, like, treat us with a bit of respect. We're paying the money. We don't have to. But, oh, yeah, well, don't make a payment. And, and I didn't make that payment. And then they sold it to someone else. And his other guys rang up. He said, oh, he said, oh, I heard you was a bit of a smart ass. I said, mate, who told you I was a bit of a smart ass? He said, oh, well, someone told me. I said, can you go back to him and give a message from me? He said, yeah, what's that? I said, tell them they underestimated me, okay? I said, I'm a fucking supreme ass, okay? I said, now I've got some news for you. I said, can you prove I owe your business to make your company the money? He said, yes, we can. I said, oh, good. Who signed the contract? He said, well, we bought the debt. I said, I don't give a fuck what you bought. What contract do I have with your organisation? Because it's unlawful to know about a contract to someone else. So if I inform the debt collector that I have no contract with you people, go yep. away. So and tell them that, give them notice if they continue to pursue you, uh, in, in tell them what to to the person, right? And tell them I do not acknowledge the company. I want to know who it is I'm dealing with. Give me a name. Write to them and say, in your full commercial liability, are you going to give me that bill? Because if you're going to give me that bill. I'm going to sue you for extortion because you're attempting to extort from me. And that's what we did to a mate. Bring it on. You want to, you want to get me in the court? You're going to look pretty fucking stupid. Yeah. I don't have a contract with you people. But everyone just does it because they don't understand contract law. And what about uh, credit card debt? A credit card debt? Oh, can, can they show you that they actually gave you the money? No. Uh, good. No debt. Mark, I'm interested in how this might be applied to occupying Crown land. Occupying Crown doesn't own land. Yeah. Ask him, it's his. Yeah. It's mine. So I can walk into the forest, start building my house, so this is mine? Well, who owns the forest? The people? Yeah, I do. Yeah, well, there you go. Now, as far as, far as I would, if I, if, I, if I had the intent to do that, I would do it. Cool. You know? Yeah. But I've seen guys on the television here 10 years ago in, in England. Returned soldier, English soldier, he went done exactly that. The council said you have to um, tear that thing down, you didn't have any approvals, blah 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 blah. He told him to go and get rooted. The next thing, they got a bulldozer out the front of his house, he yep. got a bulldozer down, he comes out with a fucking veranda and they shot him dead on the veranda. You get that? Well, the little thing with Waco, what they did in the States, I think there's big repercussions from that. Mm. Look what they've done to 
hippies and black fellas here in the past, you know, gays and people fighting so, I mean, different rights. Careful, you, there are you have to be careful. They'll come and run over you with a bulldozer. Yeah. So but like, then you've yeah. got to go and yeah. fight for your so rights. It's, 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 it's like, like Port Arthur. Arthur. People don't understand what happened in Port Arthur. People yeah, think that there was some poor kid that went down there and just went fucking ballistic and shot a bunch of people. Mm. You know? I, you know, I don't know. It's, it's like you know, Martin Bright never shot anyone. Uh, you know, the facts are, the gun that was ballistically matched to the desk of the Broadway Cafe was presented in court in one piece. The gun that was licensed to Martin Bryan, registered to Martin Bryan, was found burnt to a crisp in the Seascape Lodge. Now, who the fuck did it? Because Martin Bryan only had the one gun. Two weeks before that, he went into a gunsmith uh, by the name of Terry Hill in uh, Newtown in Hobart, and he put a, a, an AR, Colt AR-15 on the counter and said, can you tell me why the gun won't work? Yeah. First of all, he put the gun on the counter with a muzzle pointing at the bloke, yeah. with the clip in it. The yeah. guy's pulled the clip out, he said, you got the wrong bullets and the wrong clip and the wrong gun. He's yeah, with the wrong gun. And this is the guy who they then said, two weeks later, yeah. went into Port Arthur yeah. and pulled off 29 headshots on moving yeah. targets, close range with a yeah. rifle, indoors, with sights on him. Okay, so why did you... the fucking hip from an average distance 12 feet. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, that's right. Not only that, two, two times he got two two deaths with one ricochet. Yep. Not only no, that, all headshots from the hip. Yeah, yeah, from the hip. Hey? I saw footage. I used to work at Channel Seven with yeah. Martin. I seen footage of the real shit go down. Yeah, they yeah. say this did it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, it's not Howard's first time, was he? Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was had the um, Patrick Stewart at those days. He had he was training with the show overseas to come in Vegas. And only four yeah. months ago, he bragged about it. it was the best thing he ever did for Australia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they, they did it even in with the, using Asian gangs and kids to stop people carrying it over to his nights. They used kids from They're the same street population. to get rid of your Just the same way the Americans well, have done it. Well, they haven't disarmed their population. The yeah. biggest yeah. terrorism yeah. laws brought in this country, I thought, yeah. was due to Cronulla. People running down the street with an Australian flag. Mm. The biggest yeah. terrorism laws ever brought and changed in this country. And what did John Laws, John Laws and Ali Jones do for a week? But they advertise it constantly. Oh, yeah. we hope there's yeah. not going to be a riot yeah. next Saturday at Cronulla. And I'll tell well, you what everyone. The flag that flew there was not an Iraqi flag. Did you hear a it was not a Blackfellas flag. It wasn't a Japanese flag. The only flag I saw flying there was the Australian flag. Flag. They used their own flag and their own mob to bring in the harshest laws. Three beer was the You what? Sorry? To use a crown seal. The crown seal? Without lawful rights is treason punishable by death, right? So these documents, these documents here, these documents here do have six crown seals on them. And these are, one from the hit rate, was on the 8th of June 1383. The King, King Richard II gave ownership and control of the land and the pertinences there too to the King of Wales. All right. Mm -hmm. This, these documents have been prepared and were stamped and signed by the King of Wales, who on the 29th of October 2004 gave notice to the British Parliament and the, the Parliament of the United Kingdom. He is, he has not is, he has taken back control over the lands and the pertinences in the kingdom. Wales. And those, yes. Why do you think Prince Charles has got the title Prince of Wales? He's not the king. Mate, if he could be the King of Wales, he would, because then he'd have control over the land. But he'll only ever be the King of England, which is the Lord High Admiral with control over the seas and the ships. 
Yeah. And you'll never be the king of England. Nah, you won't even be the fucking queen of England. One of his sons will be. And listen, mate, you've got, to, you've, got to, you've got to ask yourself a question. Why would a man who had someone as gorgeous a wife as, as Diana turn around and marry Gorilla Parker Bowles? She is fucking She was better with the camera. <laughs> she, she, she was high up in the ugly tree and did every branch on the way down the water. <laughs> But she was good with the cane, and that's what he yes. liked. And that, that is a royal proclamation that was given to John Howard and all the Australian governments, uh, government representatives, and what this one does is a proclamation to shut down the Admiralty High Court of Australia. OK, that one there. This one here is a royal proclamation, and as you can see from this one here, that one there's got the crown seals. Get that on. They, they shut it down when? Uh, sorry, mate. Yeah. Right, they are, they are the original seals. Their, their wafer seals and their stamp seals. Right? Um, from Sorry, memory, Chris. it was as yeah. of the 4th of March 2004, he's been acknowledged by statute and custom as the current incumbent Lord High Constable of the, and Magistrate of War Hayden Castle, which makes him the ruler of the lands in the Kingdom of the Parliament of Great Britain. Okay? Um, and these are, these are all of the... Mate, it's a very interesting document. I will send to you. I've got... Because Jeffrey's... No, I've actually got... I've got the scan of the copy one. But I've actually got the text. I can send you the text in a do word document. Okay, so, but very interesting when you read this stuff. And it's quite ironic that that um, Philip Ruddock's ancestor, Master Henry Ruddock, was the the guy who was the senior signature signatory for King Richard to witness King Richard giving the land to the King of Wales. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Isn't it funny how they all stay in power? Yep. Yeah. Now this one here. Coincidence, eh? Oh, that's just that's just his proclamation of his of his. Uh, his uh, position and sovereignty, and I've got another one at home, which is a proclamation of, uh, in respect of the Pacific Islander Protection Act, where the King of the lands of the British Parliament stated very clearly that the sovereign owners of the lands in the Pacific Islands and the Australasian colonies are in fact the Indigenous peoples. So, oh, and that relates to when we went to the, see the Governor of South Australia, because we put him on notice that, uh, given his, that he's a Governor. Um, under British law, he has no right to issue leases over sovereign Aboriginal land, including Roxby Downs, Olympic Dam, and the list goes on. So, and they're they're, they're fairly concerned because they don't know what we're about to do next. They know we're about to jump up and down on them pretty heavily, but they don't know what to do. We served the documents on them on the 27th of November, and two days later we had an invitation to morning tea with the Governor of South Australia to explain what was happening. And when we put the documents and the information in front of him, I said, "You have to admit you can't refute any of this." He said, "No, we can't." So, are these like original documents or oh, fuck you, yeah, no, they're original, they're original. Who, you you'll see the reaction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, that I've, got, I've got a friend who works as a valet for a member of the royal family. <laughs> Every copy in the in the Pacific Islands, Australasian colonies was destroyed. And when I sat down with a chap named Arthur Sinodennis, and I said, Arthur, have you seen this? And I put these proclamations and a couple other documents in front of him. Now, Arthur Sinner Dennis, do you know who he is? He was John Howard's Chief of Staff from 1996 until the 16th of December 2006. Um, and that's when he left. And that's why you'll see, if you, have, if you notice, as of December 2006 until the election last year, John Howard went... Because he was the brains behind the throne. Right? He is now the Chief Finance Officer for Goldman Sachs. Right? And I asked him about the set-off account. I said, you know, do you know about this set-off -okay account? And this was at a place called Bar Luca at 72 Phillips Street in Sydney, which is next door to Howard's office. We went and had, sat down had a coffee, and I said, do you know about this? And he said, mate, you're not fucking supposed to know about this stuff. I said, hang on, you've got honours degrees in economics and stuff. Do you know about this? He said, oh, I fucking know about it, but you're not supposed to. So they know, mate. They know, they know what's, what's happening. And this is, so far as... Oh, I hate the term, but white Australia goes, and they think they've got uh, tenure in their land. The state government has plans to give its agencies and councils power to compulsorily acquire private land to resell to developers at a profit, or if they choose, at a reduced price, so the developers can make even more money. You know the you know the councillors around here are bitching about this law they just introduced. That one. That's the one. Then the law the law gives the the state government the right. Like this is their interpretation. <laughs> the right, no, 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 no. 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 To, take 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 to take it, to take it, steal, to take it. And if you want to, if you want to look up a case called Bone versus Mothershaw, judgment handed down the third of October last year. Um, the justice who handed down the judgment said the only rights that anyone who has freehold land has in their land is the right to walk on it and pay council or pay government fees. 
in respect of it. That's it. End of story. No one owns their land. No. Bullshit. Blackfellas does. According to them. Yeah, according to them. Yeah, well, according to them. Their problem is that they know they don't have jurisdiction, they don't have sovereignty, they don't have title. Okay? And, and like I said to the Governor of South Australia, you keep referring back to native title. We're not interested in the fraudulent legal constructs of the Parliament of this country. We're talking about sovereign title under Indigenous sovereign law. All right? Now, a sovereign who's a constitutional monarch here cannot lift that capacity and stick it on top of an absolute sovereign. It's impossible. You know, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a junior constable turning around to the Commissioner of Police and saying, out of the way, can't happen. All right? They know this, mate. They know it. They know it's coming. You know? But the thing is, the more people that get to know the facts of what is happening, the more people are going to go, hang on. Hang on. I'm not going to tolerate this. It's as simple as that. How much of this is written so we can take our time and... 90% of it. Yeah. I mean, that we can get... Mate, what, I've done, what I've done is... I've, there's, I've, I've, like I said, I've been doing this now for about a decade and a half. Yeah. Right? What I've done is I've reduced it down as far as you want to go. Yeah. I had... I, was, had, I forget who it was. Um, a radio station. Uh, Dub, Dubbo. Yeah. A radio station in Dubbo rang me last week and they wanted to know... He said, can you put it in short terms why the... Because this guy's getting pretty narky with me. He said, can you put it in short terms then how it is that the, the Government of Australia has no sovereignty? I said, mate, piece of cake. He said, paragraph 7 of the Act of Settlement 1701 says that the monarch of the Parliament is not allowed to take her sovereignty outside the, the realms of England, Scotland and Ireland without the consent of the Parliament. The Pacific Islander Protection Act says that the, Queen, that the monarch of the Parliament of Great Britain is not allowed, and a statute barred or barred by law, from, from ex extending or construing to extend even her sovereignty or dominion in any way, shape or form whatsoever into the Pacific Islands and the Australasian colonies. I said, how simple do you want it? Mm -hmm. wow. It even names the colonies. New South Wales, yeah. please, it even names them. Yeah, and it and even and includes New Zealand as one of the colonies. It's all there for your eyes. See, when I, when I started having to defend myself, I'd, I'd been to uni and started a, a degree. And I, in law, and, and what they taught me was how to research law and how to find and cross reference. And I've always had a pretty good memory. And, but what, what, they, what I didn't get to was I didn't get to the point where I was starting to be taught yeah. this. Yeah. Right? That's right. Yeah. So what I've done is instead of looking forward, I've turned around and gone, well, hang on. A comment that was made to me in the Supreme Court by a judge in the Supreme Court was that as an Aboriginal, I had no rights under the Constitution. So what I said was, hang on, no rights, no obligations. No rights, no obligations. Okay, fine, I can wear that. Mm -hmm. right so, hang on, if I'm going to prove I've got some right in this court, I'm going to go back to the beginning and have a look. And I went back to the beginning and had a look, and instead of sort of working my way forward, I'll work my way back to it. And I kept finding these, not, not holes, these chasms mm -hmm. that you could drive a truck through. And I thought, well, this is interesting, I must be reading this wrong. And then I started sort of cross-referencing one act to another and, hang on, if, if the Constitution is an act of the British Parliament and we're supposed to be an independent sovereign nation and we've got equal sovereignty to Great Britain as a member state of the UN and there's no reciprocal treaty between Britain and Australia in respect to the use of British law in our country as required under UN, the UN Charter, um, how are they using their law in my country? Illegally. Fuck them. Well, then, then where's Australia come from after that? Where's Australia come from? That's what I'm saying. If it doesn't, if if the British.